The Fierce Protector. Very early in his life, John dreamed of someday becoming a missionary. This burning desire remained with him all through his teens. When he entered college, he felt the Lord had called him to study for the ministry. During his college years, he met Sarah, a young lady who also loved her Lord and who shared John's desire to serve the Master. John asked Sarah to become his wife, and together they determined to go wherever the Lord would call them. One day that call came to far-off Africa. Bidding farewell to family and friends, they left their homeland and journeyed to their new home in Bloemfontein, South Africa. Now their home was not in the best part of the town. The streets were poorly lighted and not safe at night. Often homes were burglarized and sometimes bodily harm came to the occupants. But Sarah and John trusted the Lord to keep them safe. Sarah, I'm afraid I've been called out of town for a few days. I've been asked to hold some meetings for the workers at a mission north of here. How long will you be gone, John? Well, I have to leave on Sunday. If all goes as planned, I should be home by Friday noon. Five days? It will seem like a long time. I know, dear. If it wasn't such a rough trip, I'd take you along. I I really don't like leaving you here, either. Don't worry, John. The Lord will take care of me. We're doing his work. We must trust him. Our lives are in his hands. Yes, you're right, of course. But I still don't like having you home alone. Everything will be fine, John. Don't be concerned. In her heart, Sarah didn't feel too brave. But she would never let John know how frightened she really was to stay alone. It might keep him from doing his very best work. Besides, she had a friend to whom she could tell her fears. Dear Father in Heaven, John leaves tomorrow to do your work. Lord, this town isn't a very safe place, and I, I am frightened to be home alone, especially when night comes. You said in your holy word that the angel of the Lord encamps round those that love and obey you and delivers them. I'm claiming your promise and asking you to send your angel to protect me and to bring John home safely. Thank you for hearing and answering my prayer. The hour arrived for John to leave. He opened the front door and set his luggage on the porch, then turned to Sarah. Suddenly, through the open door, a strange, large dog came bounding into the room and lay down under the table. Well, <laughs> did you ever? Where did that dog come from? Oh, my goodness. Come on, fella. Get out of here. <laughs> that dog won't budge. He just won't move. Oh, John, dear, you're going to miss your train if you don't hurry. Oh, don't worry about the dog. Well, I can't leave this beast in the house with you, late or not. Oh, John, we always had dogs on the farm. I'm used to them. I'll get him out of here after you leave. Now, don't worry. You'd better get going. Well, it's the strangest thing I've ever seen. But you're right. If I don't get going, I'll miss my train. Be careful, darling. I'll see you Friday, hopefully by noon. Goodbye, dearest. All right, boy. John's gone, and it's time for you to go, too. Now, come along. Let's go. Come on, boy. You know something? You're a very stubborn creature, to say the least. Well, I can't leave the door open forever. Besides, I have work to do. Oh, well. Maybe you'll be more willing to leave later. You'll just have to let me know when you're ready to go. Evening came, but still the dog remained. Sarah coaxed and teased. She pleaded and scolded, but to no avail. Well, all right. You can wait until bedtime, then. Bedtime came. And still, he refused to go. Well, I guess I'll just have to let you stay here all night. The big dog lay down beside Sarah's bed on the rug, and there he slept all night. In the morning, he willingly left of his own accord. The hours that followed were very busy ones for Sarah, and as the day wore on, she had almost forgotten her strange visitor. Then, about five o'clock that afternoon... Oh, 
Well, I never. I, I didn't expect to ever see you again. So you've come back to be my protector. All right, all right. Maybe we can't improve your disposition, but the least I can do for my fierce protector is to give him some supper. Okay, you just relax there under my table. You'll have something to eat in a jiffy. The big, fierce dog seemed grateful to Sarah for food and water. Then, lazily, he stretched out under the table and snoozed. When bedtime came, he again followed Sarah to her room, and again he slept on the rug right beside her bed. And as the day before, he left when morning came. Finally, I've caught up with my mending. I have so much I want to get done while John's away. Guess I'll make myself a little supper. Almost five o'clock. Sure is more fun to cook when... Oh! <laughs> He's back. My fierce protector is back. Hi there, fella. Good boy. Five o'clock exactly. Hey, you must have a built-in alarm clock. Oh, I don't even mind your growl anymore. I'm glad you're here, you big, tough guy. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. The days passed. And the schedule was always the same. About five o'clock in the afternoon, the dog returned, as determined as ever to stay for the night. Sarah welcomed her fierce protector, bad disposition and all. Now, only one more day remained until John would return. Bedtime came, and again, when Sarah retired for the night, the dog lay on the rug beside her bed. For several hours, they slept peacefully. Then... <sighs> Quiet, boy. It's time to sleep. What? What's that? Men's voices. What sounds like they're drunk. Why, why, they're right outside the bedroom window. Did, did I lock? Yes, I locked all the windows and doors before I went to bed. Oh, they must be trying to pry the window open. What shall I do? Oh, dear Lord, please help me. You see, I told you we could get in. All right. Yeah. Go see if you can find us some money. I've got heaven of a drink. <laughs> oh. Oh. Ah. What's the matter with you? A dog. A big dog is after me. Watch out. I'm going to get out of here. Come on, boy. The dog's going to eat my life. The two drunken hoodlums made a quick retreat from the house. Sarah's fierce protector had driven them away. Good fellow, good boy. Oh, I was so frightened. The angel of the Lord does encamp around those that fear him and delivers them. Oh, dear Father in heaven, in so many ways you have come to our aid in times of need. This time your help came in the form of a dog to protect me. Thank you, Father, for sending the fierce protector when I needed him most. The next day, about noon, John arrived home. Sarah joyfully greeted her husband and rather impatiently listened as he proceeded to tell her all about his week. So our meetings were greatly blessed. It's a step forward in our work here. Sarah, I have the feeling you're not listening. In fact, I get the feeling you might burst if I don't let you talk. <laughs> I just might at that. Oh, John, remember that big dog that came charging in just as you were leaving last Sunday? I most certainly do. I wondered all week how you got rid of him. Did you have trouble getting him to leave? Well, I didn't get him to leave. He just wouldn't go. Sarah. Th well, that night, when I went to bed, he followed me to the bedroom and stretched out on the rug beside our bed, and there he snoozed well, all night. In the morning, he left. That's really something. But wait till you hear the rest. Every day he came, always about five o'clock in the afternoon. Why, Sarah, that's incredible. Well, then Thursday night, two drunken hoodlums broke in what? right through the bedroom window. John, I was terrified. 
he viciously attacked them. They left just as fast as they could. The Lord sent that dog, Sarah. I'll always believe he did. You say he comes about five o'clock? That's right. You'll see him tonight. Just wait and see. But Sarah's fierce protector never returned. Not that day, or the next, or the next. John and Sarah searched everywhere, but found no trace of him. Nor did they find anyone in the neighborhood who'd ever seen the dog. It seemed an unsolvable mystery. But John and Sarah would always believe that the fierce protector was sent from God. Mm-hmm.